How do we connect the Iran hostage crisis, broadcast journalist David Brinkley, the EDSA People Power Revolution, January 19, and the province of Nueva Ecija? On November 4, 1979, a group of Iranian students took over 60 American hostages at the U.S. Embassy in Tehran, Iran. This was in supposed retaliation for America's allowing the deposed Shah of Iran sanctuary. Some say that the hostage taking was about more than the Shah's medical care. It was a dramatic way for the student revolutionaries to declare a break with Iran's past and an end to American intervention in its internal affair. It was also a way to raise the intra and international profile of the revolution's leader, the anti-American cleric Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini. The students set their hostages free on January 21, 1981, or 444 days after the crisis began, and just hours after President Ronald Reagan delivered his inaugural address. Many historians believe that that hostage crisis cost Jimmy Carter a second term as President of the United States. Now going back to the story, every day there were regular news updates in the US media. One such update over the 444 day ordeal evolved into a daily evening news program called Nightline with Ted Koppel. Let's leave that story aside for a moment and talk about a man named Nino Aquino. Benigno Simeon Nino Aquino was the husband of the future president of the Philippines, Corazon Aquino. He was known to have formed the leadership of the opposition toward Ferdinand Marcos, who was then president of the Philippines. It was past 1 p.m. on August 21, 1983, when the plane he was in arrived at the Manila International Airport, which is now known as the Nino Aquino International Airport. There were over 1,000 armed soldiers and police officers in Manila that were assigned by the government to provide security for Aquino's arrival. However, sometime between him exiting the plane and boarding the vehicle provided for him, gunshots were heard. After the gunshot stopped, they found Aquino dead on the tarmac. A few years later, after the murder of Nino Aquino, Koppel was one of the American journalists who kept badgering Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos about all the political problems he faced and asking if he still had U.S. support. When people heard I was coming out to do an interview with you, you know what most people are interested in? Mm -hmm. Your wife's 3,000 pairs of shoes. How many shoes? How many shoes? Can you wear on 20 years? Exactly. How many can you? Well. To quell the complaints, Marcos agreed to an interview on This Week with David Brinkley. Instead, he announced snap elections for 1986, a year before his latest term officially ended. The allegations of massive cheating and a series of protests culminated in what is now known worldwide as the EDSA People Power Revolution. Now, The EDSA Revolution in 1986 was a highlight for Philippine democracy and was praised worldwide as a successful bloodless revolution. The revolution showed the successful efforts to oust a tyrant by a demonstration without violence and bloodshed. Now, why a revolution, you ask? Well, it was a result of the long supposed suppressed freedom by the Marcos government. Now, EDSA, the venue for the revolution, or Epifanio de los Santos Avenue, was originally supposed to be named 19 de Junio, or the 19th of June, or Ramon Magsaysay. Instead, it was named after one of the most intelligent Filipinos of all time. And who was Epifanio de los Santos y Cristobal? A historian, scholar, painter, and all-around genius, and also governor of the province of Nueva Ecija. And that's Flip La, where we connect the dots from everywhere and everywhere and bring it home to the Philippines. I'm Bill Velasco, and you're not. <laughs>